Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Taramina. Welcome to OAA Now here on Sammy Taramina blog around the OAA, the host of Last Week Brain Cells and the host of Between Terminus on Orient Television. I'd like to welcome those watching on the local voice on SoundCloud and those watching on Orient Neighborhood Television. A lot to talk about this week here. Obviously, we got the big... Um, we got some big coaching news in football over Adam Southfield, Arts and Tech. We're going to talk about that. Um, we're going to also recap a lot of basketball stuff. Obviously, we got the holidays classics coming up this week. Um, so we're going to preview all those games um, going on around the um, around the Metro Detroit area. Um, what teams to keep a really close eye on. Um, what teams are rising heading into 2024. Um, also, what teams, you know. You know, recapping also 2023, obviously, with the state championships. Obviously, you look at football with Southfield Arts and Tech, boys basketball with Ferndale. Um, several other teams winning state championships, including Stony Creek and girls soccer. Um, so, a lot to really look at. More of like a recap flex of 2024, uh, 23, heading into 2024. Um, but let's go to our big story here. Obviously, over at... Um, Southfield Arts and Tech, the big, big story here. Um, Coach Aaron Marshall stepping down at Southfield, um, taking over the Birmingham Brother Rice football job. Um, you know, when you look at the record that, you know, Marshall, of course, um, what played at Brother, I mean, he was a student at Brother Rice. Um, you know, he, he's he been, at, he, I mean, he's done a lot for the Warrior community. Um, but when you look at, of course, um, you know, when you look at what he did over at Southfield, I mean, he led that team to a Division One state championship. Um, he went forty and third. I mean, like, I, I mean, he um finished. Um, he coached at Southfield for three years. Um, went twenty three and eleven in that stretch. Um, you know, when he went twenty three games at a place like Southfield, that's not easy to do. Um, he took over for Conley in twenty twenty one. He was the offensive coordinator under um Conley. Um. But when you look at, you know what I mean, he was a, t he, I mean, he was the, um, he was a head coach at Detroit Northwestern for two years. Um, you know, then he went to, went to Chicago and then, um, and then, um, he, um, you know, went to Southfield and you really look at a course, you know what I mean? He does, um, he did play at Birmingham Brother Rice. So that does, you know what I mean? So that is going to be, it, it'll be interesting to see how. He does over there, considering, you know, takes over for Coach Anna Kerensky. Um, he led the Warriors to a 40 and 33 record in seven years, coaching at Birmingham Brother Rice. Of course, um, Kerensky took over for Al Fercasa. Um, of course, Fercasa, we know, is the legendary coach at Birmingham Brother Rice. Um, they went winless last year. And. You know, and now they asked Marshall to um, take over that program, and it's a big hire for them because they know how good that Kerensky's been with with um with Birmingham brother. I mean, like with um with brother Rice. Um, I think when you look at the scenario, how that's done, um. You know, with Marshall, you know, what he did at A&T, knocked off um, Detroit, I mean, knocking off um, some really good teams, including Belleville last year in the state championship game. Um, he kind of figured there were a couple things that um, attracted Marshall to this job. Um, obviously, the sub-varsity programs, the JV and the freshman program, yes, they had a rough year in the varsity level. But in the JV and the freshman level, they were pretty good. They were pretty good. And, you know, that, you know what I mean? And you put it a guy like Marshall, um, you're going to get results. And he's here's a guy who's produced results. And, you know, and you look at what, the, what, what Brother Rice is getting is you're getting a big-time hire. You're getting a D1 champ, state championship coach. He's been there. Um, now, with Berman Brother Rice, they're in Division Three right now for when it comes to postseason. And, you know, this is a game changer when you look at that hire 
for Birmingham Brother Rice in their athletic department. And it, you know, it, I mean, I know because I've had Coach Marshall on the podcast at least, tw- I mean, several times. I mean, I've had him on the podcast. Um, for him to accept, you know what I mean? Like, it's going to be, it'll be interesting to see how he does in the Catholic League. Um, because you're playing against some teams in Ohio. You're playing against the likes of Orchard Lake St. Mary's. Um, you're playing against, um, Nobody Detroit Catholic Central. You're playing against, um, you know, UAD Jesuit. I mean, you're playing those type of teams, and that's going to be interesting to see how, um, he does in that, um, in that league. I mean, it's, I mean, it's a different league. I mean, the Catholic League's a much different league. And now you add those other teams, you know what I mean? They expanded that league. And it'll be an interesting challenge to see what happens for him going forward. Now let's look at Southfield. Because now when you look at Southfield, you just lose, you lose a lot of experience. You lose a lot of talent. Um, now you just lose your head coach. Um, so now you at so now you're basically at square one, and there's been a lot of questions with A and T considering program strength. I mean, there is now because the situation is you just won a state championship, you know, and then all of a sudden everybody else either graduates or bails, and that's what's happened here. Now, the question for me is going to be for A&T is, are they going to retain the coaching staff there? Are they going to, you know, they're going to have to, are they going to have to start completely brand new? Because you look at that situation now with A&T, um, you know, you're going to be, you're in the white division for football, but now, you know, you're going to be, significantly more down than you were, the, than you, I mean, like, now, than you were last year when you won it all. And I don't know what the new coach is going to do when it comes to this non-conference. I don't know what's going to happen when it comes to, you know, how is A&T going to be going forward? Because now, you know, you just lose Marshall. Now you're going to have to basically start over from square one. And, that's where I'm seeing with A&T right now. I mean, I know a couple months ago, we last month we talked about, um, you know, strength of the program. Program strength, we talked about that. But I think with this move now for Marshall going from A&T to Birmingham Brother Rice, um, that's going to say, you know, I mean, this, this move, you know, could honestly hurt the program because... Because of, you know, obviously you're looking at the middle school levels. You're looking at, okay, you're looking at, of course, Birmingham Brother Rice with their ability to recruit. Um, you know, and, and, I, and, you know, it could be really interesting to see what happens to that program going forward. But, you know, I think this is a, this hurts Southfield um, with Marshall leaving um, the program to take over at Birmingham Brother Rice. Um, for Birmingham Brother Rice, as mentioned, this is a great hire for them. I mean, I'm looking at the comments. I mean, like, you know, I'm looking at the press release that was released. Um, you know, I mean, like, Birmingham Brother Rice Athletic Director Jeff, um, the Jeff Kastent, I mean, Jeff Katera, um, said in a statement, you know, it's an important moment in the history of the Birmingham Brother Rice and its athletic department. Um, you know, that they went, they went, um, they had a really very thorough thorough coaching process and you know and they're looking forward to the opportunity to work in with coach Marshall um and then Marshall saw as an opportunity to build on the rich tradition of Birmingham Brother Rice you know um so we'll see what happens i mean you look at of course what Adam Koreski did as mentioned 40 and 33 in 7 years taking over for Alfred Casa um, but winless in the last, um, but winless last season, you know, that's not going to go over well at Birmingham Brother Rice. If you go winless, that's not going to go over well. And <laughs> that's in a show, in a show. So we'll see what happens. I mean, like it's, it's a very interesting scenario 
to what's brewing over at um both Birmingham Brother Rice and South Anderson Tech. So it's something to really keep a close eye on when you look at um when you look at the um you know when you look at what's gonna happen this offseason. I mean we've already had a, a crazy offseason. I mean Scott Merchant's now the new coach at Lawrence Tech. Um you look at of course Nick Merlo's out at Stony Creek. Um now you have Aaron Marshall now coaching at um Birmingham Brother Rice. Um I mean like it's interesting. I mean, it's really interesting, you know. And also, you look at a guy like Joe Palka at Celine. He's now in Albion. I mean, Scott Merchant mentioned he's over at Lawrence Tech. So, it's interesting to see that a lot of these colleges, universities, and other schools, you know, going after coaches, you know, going after, like, you know, you look at some colleges going after several proven coaches um, with Joe Palka at Celine and then Scott Merchant at Chippewa Valley. And then, of course, you have Nick Merlo leaving Stony Creek to be an assistant at Orchard Lake St. Mary's. Um, and then Aaron Marshall now leaving Safi Darson Tech to coach at Birmingham Brother Rights. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens, who takes over at, like, Stony Creek and um, Safi Darson Tech, respectively. Those are two jobs to really keep a close eye on. Um, it'll be interesting to see who does, and obviously with the program strength and all that, um, it's something to really, really keep an eye on going forward there when you look at the um, scenarios. So we'll see what happens. Um, for Coach Marshall, um, you know, I, you know, he had a great year with A&T, um, great three years leading the program to a Division One state championship, bringing an OA, red, bringing an OA championship, um, and bringing a state title to South at Arson Tech, their first ever in school history. Um, It'll be very interesting to see what happens with A&T going forward. I mean, it'll be really interesting to see how that one goes. So, we'll see what happens. Um, we'll keep an eye on the football coaching situations at both A&T and Stony Creek on the podcast. And we'll, um, we'll, we'll go more in-depth surrounding um, those two coaching situations there. Um, let's go down to some boys basketball stuff. I mean, obviously, you know, we got the holiday classics coming up. Um, you know, when you look at the, um, I just, before the pod started, um, I did update the ho- the districts, um, you know, with the holiday thoughts. You want to take a look at that, that's at Saginaw Bay, um, 4650 at blogspot.com. You just got to click the June column, um, go deep down and you can take a look at the, um, basketball articles. I do post my, um, the blogs on X, um, or you call it Twitter these days. It used to be Twitter. Now it's X now. Um. So when I look at, you know, some teams that are rolling right now and some teams I got some concerns with, I'm going to start with the teams I got some concerns with. Um, I'm going to go with girls first because, you know, when you look at girls basketball, you know, you look at, you know, you look at the teams that you don't have to worry about, but then some teams you really got to start worrying about. Um, I think pretty much the team that I would be most worried about, honestly, is Rochester because, when you look at the Falcons situation, and we mentioned this last week, it is you can't rely on Alice Max just to basically carry you. You know what I mean? She needs help. It's almost similar to that situation like it was in Oxford with Jake Champagne with the boys situation at Oxford. But Alice Max, you know, she's getting 19 point, 19, 20 points a night. <laughs> she's a double double machine tonight. But she needs help. It's a classic. Batman Robin like scenario where you need like a Robin to help with Batman. And usually that's what it that's I mean, usually that's what happens sometimes in basketball is <laughs> when you rely on one person to carry you, you're gonna struggle. And Rochester really struggling right now. I mean, they had that three point loss to Wixom St. Catherine Siena, 39-36 now. Been hearing a lot about Kylie Robinson coming back, and <laughs> she's going to help that team, yes. But the problem is with Rochester is they don't have that guard that can really, you know, that can really, like, um stand out. They don't really have that guard. I mean, like, you look at players like Caitlin Gugliela, you have Lucy Cook. Um, <laughs> Lucy Cook, obviously, she can play... um. You know, she's an athlete, you know, obviously cross-country athlete, all-state athlete in um, cross-country and track and field. Um, But, you know, when you look at, 
you know, but when you look at it, you know, you're going to have to find like a scoring guard. And you look at Rochester, there's a lot of questions who can score at, from the guard position. That's the big question when you look at Rochester because you just can't rely a lot on Max and Robinson to basically, you know what I mean, in a, to carry in games. I mean, you can't do that because what if teams shut you down in the middle? I mean, like, you know, that's what, that's what um you know, that's been the weakness for Rochester. Um, you know, it's been the guard play. If if they don't shoot well, they don't do well. I mean, that's really been what the issue has been for Rochester, and you rely a lot on Max's as security blanket. So if you're Coach Bill Thurston, you got to find that guard. You got to. I mean, if you can find that guard, then it, that'll help you in a big way. That opens up space for Mac. For Max, it opens up space for Robinson when she comes back. Um, because everybody can go in, everybody can go inside and like, you know, everybody can play a two, three zone on you and basically force you outside and shoot threes. So we'll see what happens, but that's the big concern I have right now. That's one team I'm really concerned about right now with the way that they're playing right now is Rochester. And that's something to be very, very concerning when you look at, when you look at Rochester right now is that guard situation. They got to get that fixed. You know, because when you look at that district coming up, you know, back in March, in March, you know, Stony Creek's going to be there. I don't trust you to Eisenhower one bit. Um, Romeo's off to a nice start, but their only loss was to Stony. Um, Adams has been improved, but they've lost two straight. Um, so when you look at that district for Rochester, that district's still very winnable for Coach Bill Thurston. But they've got to get that guard situation fixed. And you're playing in a division like the Red. That's not an easy thing. And, you know, that's a big concern going forward if you're Coach Bill Thurston. Um, <coughs> I am concerned with Troy a little bit. Now, here's why I'm a little concerned with Troy. Because when you look at the Colts coming into the year, they went through a coaching change. Um, you look at, of course, um, you know, with Laura Guzman taking over the program. And <clears throat> Laura has done a really nice job with that team. Um, but when you look at the record, you got to look at the transition period. It's got to happen during the year. Um, Diamond Prince has had some big games. I mean, she had a 31-point game against Sterling Heights Stevenson. Um, they were in it with Groves, um, but ended up falling in that one. Um, they got a tough schedule ahead of them. And when you look at that division in the blue, you look at Southfield's in there. Um, Southfield's been playing really well right now. I think Berkeley's well improved with the way that that team's been. I mean, they were very competitive despite their loss to Royal Oak. I think they're much better than people think they are. Um, and when you look at that district, that district does look winnable. But they're going to have to go through Bloompia Hills. Um, Seaholm has also much improved as well. I mean, Seaholm, but with Seaholm, in their case, we're going to know a lot about them when the first week of January turns. I mean, because they got to play at, they got to play Clarkson, they got to play Stony Creek. Um, Bloompia Hills, obviously, this has been a, t that's been a team that's had a lot of rough luck, but they've won two straight, um, albeit against Farmington Ferndale University. Um, you look at, of course, um, but then you look at, of course, um, you know, and then, I mean, like, and then with Troy, in their case, you know, I'm curious to see where their interior play's been. Um, I they rely a lot on Diamond Prince. They got Reagan Zider, you got Carly Hagenbottom in the interior. Um, I've got some concerns when you look at Troy, um, you know, but, I think if Troy keeps doing what they're doing, um, they're going to be a tough out maybe come February and March because they're going to have things figured out. They're going to have a year experience. Uh, it's just going through that transition period for them, and they got it, and they're transition have to transition it during the year. So, but that's another team I'm concerned about is Troy. Um, Troy Athens is another team I'm worried about, despite getting their first win against Notre Dame Prep. Um, they've got some things to address. Um, that's another team I'm concerned about is Troy Athens. They've got to get some things turned around quick. 
over there. Um, and then, you know, when you look at them, um, Avondale, of course, the injury bug has been a big concern for them. Um, so that's another team that I'm a little worried about with them is, you know, early in the year they had a good start. But when you look at where they're at now, um, you know, if they keep if the injury bug keeps hurting them, that could be trouble. And you look at the way Ferndale's been playing. Um, Ferndale's been off to that torrid start. I mean, they knocked off Detroit Cast Tech. Um, but they've had some tough losses lately. Lost to Dexter. Um, they just lost to Macomb, Dakota. Um, then they got two games coming up in the um, you know, in the um, Hardwood Class. I mean, they got one in the Hardwood Classic and then one in the um, LBI Insider um, Winterfest Classic over at Wayne Memorial when they played Tecumseh. Um, they got Ann Arbor Pioneer in the um, in the Hardwood Classic. Um, so it's Ferndale right now to me is the best team in that division right now. Then I would say, when I look at the divisions right now, I would say the team, and then the teams have been playing really well. Um, obviously, you know, we know West Bloomfield's there. We know Lake Orion's there. We know Clarkson's there. Um, Stony Creek's been playing well. Royal Oaks off to a good start. Um, you know, and then you look at others, um, the South is off to a nice start. Um, <coughs> but, you know, you kind of expected, you know what I mean? Some of those teams have had that strong start to the year. Um, Ferndale, I know a lot of people have been surprised about talking about them. I mean, I know we talked about them last week on the podcast, um, with the way that team's been playing. Even though the record right now does stand, I think, around 500, but Keith Paris is done a really nice job. I mean, they played this ridiculous tough night conference, almost similar to that of the boys, where, you know, if you look at what Coach Juan Rickman's team, um, that schedule um, looks, um, they, they're almost playing almost very similar to that on what the boys are doing. And is it a good idea? I mean, like, at sometimes it can be, but sometimes it's not. So, we'll see. I mean, we'll see. I mean, Ferndale right now, it'll be interesting to see. They got two games coming up. We're going to preview the um, the Coyote Classics coming up in a little bit. So, and then there's North Farmington. I mean, North Farmington's a team that, you know, here's a team that they've been out to a nice start. But like I said with them, the jury's out on them. I mean, they had a nice win against Adams. They're only down like five, like six in the fourth quarter. Hanging the fourth quarter and then he pulled away. Um, Anaya, Anaya Billups has been a really good addition for them. Um, Hannah Hart, Asiya Jihad. Very good players. Very talented players. But I think the game against Lake Orion is going to probably be the one that really tells me if North Farms is for real or not. I mean, Lake Orion... We know the Lake Orion's a really resilient team. I mean, they have they went up in the Bay City and got a big, big win up there, and that's not an easy place to go to win up there is in Bay City or in Auburn. Um, of course, you know technically, you know they're on the western part of Bay City, um, so they're in Auburn. But Lake Orion had a nice win up there in um, Bay City. Um, but Lake Orion, you know the way that team's been playing. Um, you know, and then obviously, um, but North Farmington, yes, they're undefeated, but the jury's out with them. The jury is out with the Raiders, and I think, you know, if they beat the Dragons, um, then you could say that this team's for real. I mean, you could say Coach Michael Allen's team's for real. I mean, like, that's really going to be the key game, I think, for North Farmington. I think it's that Lake Orion game because, you know, you look at that schedule North Farmington's played, Adams has probably been the best team, and Adams has been probably the best team they played all year. So, we'll see. I mean, we'll see. Um, we will see, though. Um, when I look at the girls' basketball side of things, obviously West Bloomfield, Lake Orion, Clarkson, Stony Creek, um, obviously your top teams. Rochester struggling a little bit, as mentioned. Um, Oxford, 500, played a tough schedule. Um, 
I think we're going to be fine. Um, White, Royal Oaks, the best team in that division by far. Seaholm, um, you know, Bloopy Hills is going to be, Bloopy Hills around 500. Um, then, of course, you have um, Groves has been up and down. Um, Harper Woods, you know, it's hard to get a read with them. Um, then North Farmington. Um, Blue, I think Southfield Arts and Tech right now, the way that they're playing. Um, then it's Berkeley. Um, then it's then it's Troy, then Adams. Um, followed by Troy, Athens, and Farmington, and then the Gold, Ferndale, Avondale, um, Oak Park. Actually, Pontiac, then Oak Park. Um, Pontiac, the way they've been playing, I've been really impressed with them. Um, then you have Ferndale University. Um... And, you know, that's my take on the girls right now is, you know, when you look at when you look at it right now, that's how it is right now. Um, let's go to the boys. Um, you look at, of course, the, um, you know, you look at teams that have been rolling, teams that have not been rolling, um, teams that need this break real badly. Um, North Farmington's been on a roll. Um, Groves, teams I've been really concerned about. I Right now, I probably would look at the red right now as my biggest concerns. Oak Park is a team that I think if the week that they had, I think it's time to press the panic button on Coach Real Shepard's team. I mean, they have not looked good. Now, albeit, yeah, they played Ferndale, they played North Farmington, um, but they have not looked very good at all. That is not good. I mean, you look at <coughs> you look at that team. I mean, like coming in here, a lot of people look at Oak Park and say this is gonna be a team that's better than thought, better than thought. Um, but they have not. They've, you know, in those in the last two games have not played good basketball. They've not played, and ever since the buzzer beater against Warren Michigan Collegiate, where they won forty six forty four. They haven't really looked very good. I mean, they really, they really haven't. And to me, that's a concern. And that's something they gotta address. Because if they can address that, um, I think they'll be fine. But I did make some changes in their district, um, resembling that concern. And yeah, every good team goes through rut. But, but in this case. I don't know. This is a rut. I mean, like, this could be, this is like maybe a long sense of worry a little bit when I look at Oak Park right now, the way that that team's been playing. Um, and then there's Groves. Um, they lost four straight. Um, really been competitive. Lost a lot of tough games. But, you know, you look at that division for Groves. Was it worth it for them to be in the white? I mean, like, that's the quest for being in the red. Then it was in the white. I mean, you look at the red right now, it's it's top-heavy right now. When you look at teams like North Farmington, who's been playing really good basketball. Ferndale, um, after their, um, and Ferndale, they had that tough loss to um, West Bloomfield. Um, and then you have Clarkson's been playing better. Adams has been playing better. Um... You know, for Groves' sake, I mean, they're going to have to really, there's no days off. And when I talked to Coach Mark West during media day, they, he knows it. There's no days off. And that's the big concern that I have with Groves is it comes down to morale. Is, you know, when you're in the red, it is not an easy thing being in that division. It is not. Because you're playing a really good team night in, night out. You got to earn your key to be in that division. It is not an easy division. And for Coach Mark West, I mean, like, they're going through a lot right now. I mean, they do got a matchup with Detroit Cast Tech Loom in the Motor City Round Ball. Um, and it'll be interesting to see how this team does, I mean, going forward. I mean, Groves is a team I'm really concerned about watching them, just watching the way they play. Um... They're, they're going through a lot right now. I mean, they just got one of their best players back. 
Um, and we'll see what happens. I mean, we'll see what happens with that. I mean, we will. Um, teams I'm also concerned about. Um, Bloopy Hills is hit on with six. Um, and I talked to Coach Brian Canfield about this um a couple days ago. Um, it's going through a puzzle piece. You know, it's it's like you're putting a puzzle together, and Bloopy Hills is doing that right now. I mean, they're trying to figure out what pieces fit with that roster. They got players. I mean, they got proven players on that team. Um, they just moved up Mason Can. I mean, like um. Mason Canfield. Um, and I've seen what he can do. I know what Deron Mason can do. I know what Philip Mohammed can do. Um, but when you look at Bloomfield Hills, you know, there's d- games they look good against Harper Woods. They even though they lost it went in overtime. Um, <coughs> the games against Wall Lake Central and Lake Orion, they only scored around thirty points. That's not good. I think the game against Detroit Central is going to be big for them. Yes, Detroit Central is a solid team. They're a good team. But I think Boomby Hills is a shot in this game. They have more than a chance. And I think they have a great chance here to win that one. So, but with Boomby Hills right now, with Coach Brian Canfield, um, it's just putting a puzzle together. It's not as easy as you think it is. When you're going through, you know, with everything they went through. They lost to Adamchich. They lost, um, you know, they lost, um, they lost the New York Print. I mean, like, they lost, um, I mean, like, then they had a, um, a young man transfer to West Bloomfield. So, it's going to take a while to take adjustments. It's going to be an interesting, it's going to be interesting to see how the puzzle fits over at Bloomfield Hills, but. That's a team I'm concerned about a little bit with Bluefield Hills with the way that they're playing right now. Troy Athens is another one I'm concerned about. I mean, yes, they had that win against Southfield Arts and Tech. Um, but they didn't look good against Howell. I mean, which was a shock. And then they had a tough loss to Lake Orion. Um, but they did bounce back against a and Um... Curious to see how they do in the St. Clair Community College Showcase against St. Clair Shores Lakeview. That'll be very interesting to see how that one goes. Really interesting to see. But there's some question marks a little bit for Coach Dave Scott. Um, especially in the interior. Um, I mean, like, you rely a lot on Emmanuel Robinson. Um, but we'll see what happens to Coach Dave Scott's team. We will. <laughs> um, in the blue, Pontiac's a big concern for me now. They, they got out to a good start. They've really struggled. Um, they've lost in three straight. Um, Coach Andrew Meyer is going to have his hands full. Really is. Um, I would have put Avenue on this list, but I chose not to. I think they're starting to get back in the thick of it, which is a good sign for them. Um, and then Ferndale University is a team I'm really concerned about. I mean... It looks like the um, the inconsistencies are starting to come back again for Coach Josh Nixon, the Eagles. I mean, that's another team I'm really concerned about when I look at is Ferndale University. But a team I'm really, really concerned about, honestly, is Stony Creek. Here's why. They sit 0-6. Um, it's, it, I don't know what to say because... Coming into the year, in the last two years, I had Stony Creek favored to win the blue. Um, It looks like to me that this team is not very good when Trey Walker is not on the floor. To me, that is a concern. When I look at Stony Creek, Trey Walker has to be on the floor for you to be successful. It is, it is a given. And when he's not on the floor, bad things happen. I mean, you need that veteran presence on the floor. You need that veteran to step up for you. And Trey Walker gives you the best chance to win if you're Coach Jeff Owen. Because if you look at it, I mean, like, they're the reason why you're 0-6 right now. I mean, there's going to be some things you're going to have to correct. And they, and they have to correct it. 
because if they don't, they're in trouble. So that's a team I'm really concerned about right now. Um, teams I'm really impressed with their starts. Um, Lake Orion, 7-2, and two, five winners of five straight. Turned it around after the um, Notre Dame prep and Clarkson losses. Um, Dragons have been rolling right now. I mean, when they play team ball, watch out. Coach Jose Andrades has got something going over there. Um, Royal Oak off to a good start, 7-2. and two. This one looks more legit than last year's. Last year, I had some doubt. This year, I don't because they have some wins in there. Seaholm's a good win for this group. Blue Hills is a good win for this group. <laughs> they got a big one with Novak coming up. That should be really interesting. Um, but I like where Coach Aaron Smith is at with this team. I really like where his team's at. Off to a good start. Really good start. Um, those, that's a, those are two teams I've been really surprised with the start of the year. Didn't expect um, to have really good starts to the year. It's Lake Orion and Royal Oak, both teams. I mean, like really off to uh, off to um, you know, expected to be very young. They still are, but you know, but where they're at right now, both teams are in good spots right now. Really are. Um, Oxford up to a good to a five and three start. They've turned things around, like what like what like what Coach Joe Fed has been doing over there. Um. Fed's really um gotten I mean Jake Champagne's finally got some Robins to help him. I mean he's got I mean there's Jake Katie, Drew Katie, um Luke Stofan. Um when Oxford gets help for Jake Champagne, they're very good. I mean, that's not a question. Now when I look at that district going forward for Oxford, I think that district looks very interesting now. I can't trust Grand Blank. They Oxford just knocked off Lapeer. Lapeer also just knocked off Holly. Um, now, albeit Holly's without Tony's Anthony Simmons right now, but if Simmons is back, Holly's a much different team. So, <laughs> I think if you're Holly, you're fine. But when you look at Oxford's situation right now, they're gonna be fine. They're gonna be fine. And when I look at that blue right now in the blue division, I, I right now I trust Oxford over Avenue. No offense to Coach Jared Thomas' team. But Oxford right now, I think I would trust Oxford right now. I would say Oxford right now is the early favorite in that division. <coughs> and the white is still Troy. Red is Stuart Farmington. Um, so we'll see. We'll see. I mean, West Bloomington obviously got that big win against Ferndale. That's big. So we'll see what happens. Okay, now we're gonna preview the um the holiday classics this weekend. Um, it should be really interesting to see how the holiday classics go. Um, we're going to go with the girls first. I mean, like, obviously we're going to go with the Michigan Hardwood Classic at Romulus. Um, of course, you know, they used it as a round ball last year, but they made some changes. Um, so this is now the Hardwood Classic. So we're going to go with Ferndale first. They take on, um, Ann Arbor Pioneer. It's a 9.20 a.m. tip off that we played on the um, 28th which is on a Thursday. Uh, we're filming this on a Tuesday. So, it's an interesting matchup. I mean, Ferndale um, played a tough schedule. Um, Ann Arbor Pioneer really has not been that tested. Um, they did lose to Boney Stevenson, which, of course, Boney Stevenson, they've been up and down. They have a win against Farmington. Had a tough loss to Royal Oak. Um, so, for Ferndale, this is a good opportunity for Coach Keith Paris to you know, get a win, a much-needed win after playing a really tough schedule um, for them. And I think it'll be a big, big game for them, um, you know, and a big one that they need. Um, an early game, too. I mean, cause, but Ferndale's played their games, um, usually their holiday classic games, at, in the morning. So it'll be interesting to see how this one goes. Uh, but it's a good, good opportunity for Coach Paris um, to see where his Eagles are at. Against a team that I think they should beat. But we'll see. You never know with Ferndale. You never know with the Eagles. You know what I mean? I mean, the, the time they look very good. And then there's times they go like, what are you doing? You know what I mean? So we'll see what happens in that one. So it's a really interesting matchup between the Eagles and the Pioneers. Um, 
um, going against each other. Um, first game of the Michigan Hardware Classic at Romulus. Then later in the day, you got Clarkson taking on Birmingham Detroit Country Day. It's a 4 p.m. tip. It's a rematch of a 58-47 win for Detroit Country Day over Clarkson. I think that was at Clarkson last year. Um, Amari Wiggins um, has been really solid for the Yellow Jackets this year. Um, Ariana Wiggins. Um, but when you look at the matchup for Clarkson, obviously you got a three-headed monster in Eliana Roback, Brooklyn Colbert, and um, you know Emmy Valencia. Clarkson's played a tough schedule too. Managed to come out of those games with wins with the only exception of Chelsea, and they were just absolutely blown out by by the bull, by um by the Bulldogs. Um, Chelsea's a solid team. They're a very good team. I mean, they're the re- they're ranked in Division Two. Um, and then obviously they knocked off Howell. They knocked off um Lake Fenton. Who's been, that's a good win for them. Um, and when you look at the Wolves situation, you know, obviously roll back. Brooklyn Colbert's been playing really well. Emily Valencia's been playing really well. Um, Claire Walker's at times looked really good. Uh, for Clarkson, you know, I think I think it's going to be, I think it's them and Lake Orion right now when I look at that. Um, to see where, and I know good now looks at what um, Coach Bob Bridges is doing. And I know Coach Bob Bridges is looking what, at what Coach Aaron Goodnow is doing. So, when it and, and you know that district over there at Waterford Mott, that's either that's going to be green and white against um, yellow and blue. So that'll be really interesting once March comes around with that district. But when you look at that matchup against Detroit Country Day, tough matchup for Clarkston. Um, now Detroit Country Day's lost two straight, and this is going to be interesting. I'll be curious to see how this matchup plays out because. Now, I'll be a country days two losses have been the really good teams. So <clears throat> it'll be interesting to see what happens there. But it'd be I mean like over in Romulus. I mean like it'll be very interesting to see how this one goes. So we'll see what happens. Um West Bloomfield taking on Chicago Wendell Phillips Academy. Um last year, West Bloomfield, no stranger having to play in um Chicago um teams. Obviously they played Butler Prep last week. Um won by um one by 18. Um, had no issue with Plymouth Salem. Um, I'm curious to see how that one goes. But everything goes right. West Bloomfield should have no problem with Chicago, Wendell Phillips Academy. Um, I'd be shocked if they, get, if they lost this game. I'd be really shocked. Um, I mean, West Bloomfield, we know they haven't played in a while. Played in a week. So we'll see what happens during that one. See what happens. Um, and then they have another game on the 30th of December against Utica Ford at 540. Um, again, all these times are prox times, by the way. All these times are, are prox times. So, in this matchup here, it's a tough, I think for West Blue, it's a tougher match for Utica Ford to see where they measure up going against a, te- a state-ranked team like West Bluefield, who's been rolling people right now. And, you know, it'll be a tough match for Utica Ford. It'll be a really, really tough match for the Falcons. Um, you know, for and for Coach Matt Jones, really difficult matchup for them. So we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens in that one. But West Bloomfield should be heavily favored on paper, and they will be hanging that matchup. Um, and then you have the um, LBI Lansing Basketball Insider Winter Hoop Fest at Wayne Memorial. Ferndale's playing to come see in that one. Um, shout out to LBI Insider. Um. Do a really good job writing the previews and all that. I think this is a good matchup for Ferndale going up against Tecumseh. I mean, I've been battle tested, but not like Ferndale. Ferndale's been battle tested. They played a lot of D1 schools. I don't know how Tecumseh's been, but they're going to have their hands full. I think Tecumseh's going to have their hands full of Ferndale. Very interesting to see how that one goes. But we'll see what happens. And that's all the girls' basketball. Um, holiday classic tournaments for the week. Um, then the rest of them are all boys. So let's go to the North Farmington Holiday Extravaganza. Um, of course, Coach Todd Negotian does a really good job promoting this tournament, this showcase. Um, I mean, like, I look forward to seeing, to hearing about it every year. Um, 
And there's some interesting matchups here. I mean, Troy taking on Detroit Edison. Um, Detroit Edison's already got wins against Oak Park and Harper Woods. Haven't been really consistent, though, um, this year. But now you have Troy here. Troy with the big three of Mason Parker, Chase Kuyper, and, um, and John Whiteside. Um, they've been playing really well since that Berkeley loss. Um, they've been rolling people. So, this will be interesting to see how this one goes. Um, but I think Troy should be favored in this one. And I think they will be. I mean, but, you know, Detroit Edison's got, you know what I mean? You know, they're coming up that win again. They're coming up wins against Oak Park and Harper Woods. But Troy, then again, Troy's a much different animal. So, we'll see what happens there in that matchup. Then on December 30th, you got Avondale taking on Wall Lake Northern. Of course, Avondale will be playing, if we play in a previous game in the Motor City Round Ball against Farmington. Um, curious to see how, they, how I'm coaching it. I mean, Coach Jared Thomas does in this matchup against Ryan Negotian. Um Ryan Negotian, you know he's going to try to do that same 2 2 1 prep against, um, against Avondale. But I think what helps Avondale is that Thomas has experience in that gym. Being a coach of Adams. Um, so I think that'll help them um, in this matchup. So it'll be really interesting to see how that one goes. I mean, between the Yellow Jackets and the um, Knights of Wall Lake North. So we'll see how that one goes. And then North Farmington is taking on Flat Rock. Um, that's an 8.30 tip-off. Um, Flat Rock's got a lot against them in this matchup. I mean, the Rams, they got a lot, a lot against them. <laughs> One, the Raiders have played at 8.30 at night numerous times. I mean, they played, you know, they, I mean, like, they, I mean, they got experience. They practiced late at night. I know that. Um, I mean, like, Flat Rock's coming off. Their only loss of the year has been to River Rouge um, by three points. Had to survive Carlton Airport. North Farmington's been blowing people out like crazy. Um, so that's going to be interesting how that matchup goes. Um, tough matchup. I mean, tough matchup for um Flat Rock going against North Farmington. Really tough matchup. To see how that one goes. So it'll be it'll be a tall order for them in that matchup. St. Clair Community College Classic Showcase at Port Huron. You got Troy Atten taking on St. Clair Shores Lakeview. Um, Huskies at five and one. Troy Atten has lost two or three. This is gonna be interesting. Um, you know, I mean, like. I'll be curious to see how they measure up. Uh, how Troy Athens measures up on the 29th. It's a noon tip. So, it'll be out of, the, out of the comfort zone for both teams. So, we'll see how this one goes. We will see how this one goes. Then you have the New Baltimore Anchor Bay Tournament being played at New Baltimore. You got Rochester taking on Gross Point North. New Baltimore Anchor Bay taking on Lakeland. Um, the winners will meet in the championship game. At 6.30 p.m. The Constellation game at 5 p.m. Um, as I mentioned, Lakeland looks to be the favorite. Um, but Cross Point North is another solid team. I mean, Rochester's a sleeper. New Baltimore, Anchor Bay, they're also another sleeper. I mean, they're coming off a win against Stony Creek. Um, so it'll be really interesting to see how this one goes. Um, Rochester's coming off their first win of the year against Pontiac. Um, so... I think for Rochester, you know, they can have a good showing here um, against a really good growth white North team. Um, they could surprise some people. So we'll see what happens there going forward there. Um, the um, You got the Detroit Public School League Holiday Classic at Detroit Cast Tech. Bloomby Hills takes on Detroit Central. Um, obviously, the Trailblazers are 4-3, and three, but they've lost three straight and a lot over 60 points. Um... Big game for Bloomberg Hills for competence. If they can um, clean some things up, um, I think Coach Brian Canfield's team will be fine in this game against against the Trailblazers. Um, but we'll see how that one goes. I mean, as mentioned, it'd be a good, it'd be an interesting game to watch, to say the least. Um, December twenty eighth, other games around the league before we talk the round ball. Um, Stony Creek takes on Sterling Heights at seven o'clock. Um, I mentioned with Stony. Um, <laughs> Much better team with Trey Walker on the court. Um, big game for Stoney. They need this game. Worst way possible. 
Farmington takes on Redford Union. Both teams will be playing back in and back to back. <coughs> um, of course, um, Redford Union be taking on, um, you know, Detroit Western. Um, Farmington, of course, playing Avondale. Um, afternoon tilt, three o'clock tip over at Farmington. So it'll be really interesting to see how that one goes. And then you have, um, and then you have um, Royal Oak and Novi. That should be an interesting game over at Royal Oak. Um, third opponent, OA opponent for Novi this year. They're one and one. Um, beat Berkeley, lost to Troy. Um, Royal Oak, obviously, we know the three point shooting threat of um, Camden Clark. You have Dylan Hoff. I mean, you have um, Nick Hoffman. You have um, they have others on that team that could do very well for Coach Aaron Smith. So that'll be a really interesting game to say the least over there between the Ravens and the Wildcats in that one. And then let's go to the Motor City Round Ball. Um, starting with December 27th. You got Adams taking on Growth Point South. Both these teams very evenly matched, it looks like. Um, Growth Point South has wins over Notre Dame Prep in Roseville. Losses to UD Jesuit and Warren Lincoln. Um, Adams, we know they have Peter Kardashian's Will G. Trent Nagarge has really emerged with Coach Isaiah Novak. Um... I think it'll be an interesting game. I think it'll be a good test to see where um where Adams is. Um you know, they're coming off that loss to Clarkston. Um, so we'll see where Adams is at. I mean, it'll be a big game for Coach Novak and the Highlanders to see if they can bounce back from a tough defeat. Um Oak Park taking on um Flint Hammity. Um, this is gonna be an interesting game. Um Oak Park, you know, they've been reeling. I mean, they've lost two straight. Flint Hammond, their two losses have been to Warren D. The South, but Carmen Ainsworth, both really good teams. Tall order for Coach Duran Shepard and his team. So it'll be really interesting to see how this one goes. And then you have the nightcap on that on night one. Ferndale taking on UD Jesuit. Again, UD Jesuit's come out that win against Orchard Lake St. Mary's, which has been really impressive. Ferndale has been really a little bit. They lost to West Bluebird at home. Um, big test for them. So we'll see how that one goes between the Eagles and the um, Cubs. So that should be really interesting to see how that one goes. Um, December 28th, um, you got an OA battle between Avondale and Farmington. Avondale in the gold. Um, Avondale in the blue, Farmington in the white. Um, both teams have star players. I mean, Greg Grace for... Um, Ab for Ab for Farmington, Justin Greer Sykes for Abbeydale. Coaching match between Byron Johnson and um, Jared Thomas is also very interesting. So that should be really interesting. That should be a great matchup over there um, for the um, second game over there at 12 a uh, third game over there at 12 15. So it'll be really interesting there. A and T taking on Dexter. <laughs> um, this one will be really interesting because A and T has been struggling. Dexter has been up and down. Um, they do have a win against Wild Lake Northern. For a &T, this could be a statement win for Coach Terrence Porter. That team's been struggling. Sitting at 2-6. and six. A lot of questions with a &T. Um, We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens with them. So, when I look at the... Warriors against the um against the Dreadnoughts. Of course, the Dreadnoughts is um is Ian Lock School. That's what I call Dexter. I call Dexter the um Dreadnoughts, the um the fighting Ian Locks. See, I just heard I just heard Ian Locke um say the word go Dreadnoughts. So they take on A and T. So that should be really interesting to see how that one goes. Um and then you have West Bloomfield taking on Grand Rapids South Christian. This should be an interesting game. Grand Rapids South Christian has not fared well against the OA. They lost in the state final in D2 to Ferndale. Then they lose in football this year. They lose to Harper Woods in the state championship game. So, for, 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 um, for the Sailors, this is a big game for them. And taking on a West Bluefield team that's coming off a big win against Ferndale. Not been consistent, but looks like they're starting to turn the corner a little bit. 
Um, under Coach Ronald Jordan. This is going to be really interesting. Because West Bloomfield has shown they started to turn things around a little bit. Now, for um, Grand Rapids South Christian, if they lose this game, <laughs> for their athletic department, that's three straight losses to the OAA. It's unheard of for a team, you know, that's had issues with the league. We know Grand Rapids South Christian's got proven players. They're a very good team. Well-coached team. But they lose to West Bloomfield, they probably will not hear a, hear a lot about it. They'll probably, you know, then they're going to say, well, we do very well against everybody else except the OA. So it's a big game for Grand Rapids South Christian. Taking on a very good West Bloomfield team. A very good West Bloomfield team who are better than the record indicated. <coughs> and then we have the four games here on um, December 30th. Um, Pontiac takes on Notre Dame Prep. Rivalry separated by only a mile. Playing us at Ferndale. Tough match for Pontiac. Pontiac's a very young team. Notre Dame Prep's got a lot of experience when you look at players like Whitney Robinson. Um, you got Jacob Turtle. Um, it's going to be a tough matchup. It's going to be a tall order. Um, for Pontiac in this one. Pontiac, very young team. You got JJ Claudio. Um, it's going to be a tall order. It's going to be a really tall order for Pontiac in this game. Harper Woods takes on Adrian at 12-15. Um, I ask myself, why, why, Tawan, why are you playing these tough teams? Why? Because Adrian's 6-1, and one, and, they're score, and, they, and the lowest they've scored is 60 points. That was the Parma Western. It's going to be tough for Harper Woods. It's going to be tough, tough selling. I know Julian Young's had a game where he's went off for 43. But Adrian, they defend people. They know how to shut you down, and they're going to score in bunches. That game's probably going to be like, I would probably say like 81, maybe 81 66. We'll see how that one goes. West Bloomfield takes on Detroit Renaissance. Um, 150 tip off there. Um, Renaissance, of course, um, they've been scoring, they've scored 80 points four times this year. Be a tough match for West Bloomfield defensively. I mean, we know how good West Bloomfield is. So we'll see what happens in that matchup. We'll see what happens there. And then the last game on the docket is Groves taking on Detroit Cast Tech. Um, 7.55 tip-off there, Prox. Most likely be around 8.30. Um, Troy Cass Tech is 5-0. They had a 7-point win against Lansing Holt. But they've gone over 60 points and 80 points twice in each of those games. Groves been struggling, losing four of the last five. Big concern. So, it'll be interesting to see how that matchup goes between the Falcons and the um, Technicians. In the final game of the Motor City Round Ball Classic. Um, in that matchup. So, recap in 2023. State champions in football, obviously, with Harper Woods and A&T. Um, Adams repeating as golf state champs. Um, Stony Creek winning the soccer state championship. Um, you know, Blue Bay Hills, of course, re I mean, repeating as state champions um, in tennis. Um... We had a lot of state champions in 2023. Great year for the OA. I mean, Rochester winning a state championship and in, I'm in cheerleading. Um, great, great year in 2023 for the OA. Um, a lot to look forward to in 2024. Um, a lot to be thankful for. Congratulations to the class of 2023. Um, great year in 2023 for the OA. Hoping for a great year in 2024 as we go forward. Um, as we head into the um, holiday season. Um, all right, I'm going to sign it off here. Uh, make sure um, you follow the blog at Saginaw Bay 4650 at blogspot.com. Also, um, keep an eye on the um, coaching situations over at Stony Creek and, um, and um, <coughs> South Anderson Tech for football. 
Also, we wish everybody a Merry Christmas. Happy Kwanzaa. Happy Passover. Um, also, um, and a Happy New Year to everybody here. <laughs>